Mark Hells in years in the making. It is 8.13 on the uh, the morning den. It is a Wellness Wednesday uh, today. It is a Wednesday in time for Wellness Wednesday. Brought to you by Okami Kai Martial Arts and Fitness. That's right. And I'm going to use the word karate. How is that? Because Scott Campbell loves when I say karate. Yeah. You say it better than I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's kind of my gig. It's kind of my radio gig. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, Scott Campbell from uh, Okami Kai joins us, and uh, Pastor Andrew Allison from St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in Leesdale also joins us. Uh, good morning, Andrew. Hey, guys. Good to be on the show with you again. So let's uh, open up the can of worms. Um, and, uh, well, I mean, the can of worms is already open. We're just going to talk about the can that, that has been opened, and that is... I like how we save the tough stuff for Andrew, though. Like, we, you know, there's, there's we do. There's going to be informative conversations, but no, this is going to be hard to talk about, so let's get Andrew for this. Well, we can turn uh, direction and uh, listen, uh, Andrew, do you want to talk about stretching and the importance of stretching and <laughs> as far as wellness yes. is concerned? Yeah, it has been a test, eh? isn't it? Just trying to uh, show this kind of oh, versatility or agility. I think the word is uh, resilience. And, yeah. And and then, you know, as this has worn on, it's been nice through the warm weather. You know, people think getting outside more, but it is it is more and more a test for us. Yeah. As and a, As a community. And uh, it is a test, uh, I mean, on a personal basis for you. Uh, we were talking about it. Stage three is around the corner. And, uh, and for you guys at the church, whether or not those doors open again, because it's not going to be the situation it was before the pandemic. Yeah. You know what, what's been fun? Not fun, but it's what, what has been eye-opening for me is to watch the leadership um, people think. And, and instead of their first thought being, how can we get back what we had? What can we do for us? They've been saying, what can we do for those who are most at risk through this? You know who who's in the who's in the in the t- in the deepest pit? Who's in the toughest spot? What can we do? So you know, some some alcoholics came to us and said we we're having a hard time. We're meeting in parks, but it's supposed to be anonymous, and people walk by in the parks and go, "Hey, come over to the picnic table and talk." What are you guys doing here? And so, <clears throat> excuse me, they came and said, "We um we really need a roof over our heads. Can you make provisions? Can we wash our hands and sanitize and do what needs to be done?" So those kinds of things are that's when I think a community's at its best, how can we help those who are in the greatest need instead of how can we get what we want or get back to what we we think that we need? So well, I'm, I'm always sorry to hear stuff in the church where, it's like we were talking earlier about, you know, it's our God-given right to do stuff. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that tone of voice because I don't think that's what we're about, actually. No, and that's something you do hear when you're talking about the mandatory use of face masks is uh, it's my God-given right to make my decision uh and yeah it it is disturbing to hear things like that because um you know and correct me if i'm wrong but it's a a battle between that individual thought that individual right and the right of a community of which that individual is a part of yeah yeah i mean to we have been we are a, a bit lodged i think as a as a culture and in a script of me and what I need and stay true to myself and all the kind of me script. I, like I think about JFK, I think was the one that said in the sixties, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And it's just a different headspace, right? Like I'm waiting around for someone to do something for me, or I, I think it actually is a God given, not right, but a mandate to, to do what I can in my powers to, to assist and be part of the community. So for sure. I don't think I'm in any danger, so I'm not going to wear a mask. But we we know that the story shifts when you stop thinking about, gosh, I might get it, to gosh, I might give it, and so that that's why we put the masks on. What well, what kind of decisions? You know, obviously uh, for Scott as well, you're looking for stage three, uh, and one of the considerations are going to be masks and keeping people safe, not only your staff but also your uh, your clients as well. And uh, have you walked through that possibility of having a client, maybe someone who's been around for a long time, saying, you know what, I'm not wearing a mask, uh, and, and having to deal with that situation one-on-one? Is that for me? Yeah, for me? yeah. Uh, for, for us, we're, we're, um, we're trying to sort of wade through that, because uh, the Toronto Board of Health said that they've really made it obvious that um, if you're doing a physical fitness activity, you don't have to wear one. 
And in the Durham board, basically, they said, if you have a good reason not to wear one, then you don't have to wear one. So we're sort of trying to figure that one out because uh, what, what I'm doing with our guys is all instructors are going to be wearing masks. And, and uh, the reason why is just we have kids. And, and to us, I, I think we sort of serve as role models uh, to them as they're trying to become better uh, martial artists, so they're, they're looking towards the people that have gone through all the tests that they have to go through and, and, and all of that. So as us, you know, I, I basically used an example to our guys, and I just said, you know, one day I was, I, I basically ride a bike for about three or four blocks just back and forth from home to, to work. I, I live really close to the dojo, so um, it's easy for me. But um, I got caught one time, it was one of the dads, and he yelled at the window, he goes, oh, look, there's a sensei with his helmet on. And, and I went, oh, you're right. I should be wearing a helmet. So, so we always, I always put a bike helmet on just in case the kids see. And so to me, it's the same thing. If, if we're going to act as heroes to these guys or, or role models, if, um, I use heroes loosely, but if we're going to be those people, then we need to lead by example. And so, yeah, we're going to, we're all instructors are going to wear masks. But as far as the students go, I think we're going to leave it up to them because I do have some students that have respiratory issues and, and, uh, um, we have to keep them in mind too. And I think it comes down to the same thing. We have to be respectful of others. Uh, but uh, at this point, uh, physical fitness has sort of been something like um, even Jen had, uh, had to do a stress test and uh, even the doctors were letting her take the mask off for the last two or three minutes of the stress test. And it was just basically she was running and, and they just said, if you want to take it off, you can. So, and, and, so. no, go ahead, go ahead, finish. Well, like for her, it wasn't necessarily the, the – where well, I think it's funny, everybody's talking about inhaling and then you can't get oxygen. And, and everybody's getting oxygen, but the problem is when you exhale. And, and so it has no place to go. And, and so that seems to be our concern. But uh, I, I think, like I said, instructors are going to wear them. You know, long answer to your question, but I think instructors are going to wear them, and, and we're sort of going to try to leave it up to the discretion of the students. Strongly encourage that they wear them. We're going to have – temporary uh, masks available if they don't have their own. We were actually having some made with our logos on them just because, so, so, hey, it's me. But <laughs> well, you know, apart, apart from that, that's, that's the way we're trying to solve it. Let me ask Andrew then. Uh, Andrew, you, you continue to uh, to minister via video, uh, and you're, you're putting together a sermon. What do you say in times like this when uh, these kinds of decisions are ahead of people, um, you know, and, and important decisions in that it's mandated to wear one to go inside of a business. I think sometimes, yeah, what, so this actually brings into crystal focus for us the kinds of things that we've been saying for years and may not have had as clear an application. But So, so our guy is Jesus, and Jesus says, um, you know, the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to lay his life down. So in theory, Christians were supposed to lead the charge in laying our lives down, which doesn't necessarily mean jumping in front of a bus to save uh, someone crossing the street. It, it can be just small things. It actually works in marriage and parenting and all these other things. So if we're saying to our people, hey, this is a chance for us not to be demanding rights here, but looking for a place to lay our lives down, to to take which is precious, what God gave us, which is our own lives, and say to other people, your lives are also precious. That's the way we want to roll. And so if it's a mask, then it's a mask. You know, if it's uh, being courteous and letting people go ahead in a situation, that's, you know, that's, it's supposed to be our MO. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry when we sound otherwise and we come off differently, but that was supposed to be the way we would be in any situation, including in a pandemic. In stage three, would you reopen? No, we're, we we met last night. Leadership met last night, and, and um, stage three doesn't mean the removal of masks in a building. So we, um, you know, we, we're looking at each other. We can't sing, which is a big deal for for Christians singing, and then to to have to mask. And then the, theoretically, I can't see how I get to avoid this somehow. I would have to preach with a mask on, and so I think much of the value in eye to eye, face to face contact. You know, no hugging, no handshakes, no. It's, it's lost on us already. So our church, like most of the churches in the area, have leaned into small group gatherings, which we've done by Zoom. Or, um, you know, now people are allowed to be in small numbers in backyards with open spaces. And so we're just, in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, care for our own people, that's what it looks like. Outdoors, safe, masks when required. And big gatherings are just off our, they're just not even on the radar right now for us, even states three regardless. Would you say that's brought you closer? 
I think so, actually, because <clears throat> churches, we're like everybody else. We kind of hang with our familiar people, but the way it's worked is folks have had to gather and, and pick up the phone and call strangers within our, our church is a, a little bit bigger. And so you can actually go to church for years and, and not meet more than your 40 or 50 friends. But if you've got, you know, several hundred people, anyway, this, it has draw, drawn us closer in many ways. I'm sure in some contexts, it's been uh, deeply hard for our people. I, I think about those who are isolated, living alone for whatever reason. I think that's been, that's been a real test. And I've seen some neat friendships form around that. And I've been grateful to see people step up and care for each other, not just within the church. Listen, you know, outside, like, let's, let's be careful and, and uh, looking for ways to connect with the community and mindful of the widow next door and mindful of the single mom and those kinds of things. So where I, I see it right across the board, Christian or otherwise, people are doing their best. You know, I was thinking we, we talk about you know, wearing masks as a courtesy and everything. Like, okay, so maybe you know you don't worry about getting the disease, and I think you've mentioned that, but you might spread it to other people. But there's also a mental point of view from the other person. There's so many people that feel more comfortable when they see other people wearing masks. And and you know, like even when we teach a self defense course, one of the things that comes up with our self defense stuff is being mindful of the person that might be considered to be vulnerable. So you know, when we see uh, uh, women walking across the street, you know, as a as a male, we say, okay, you know what? Maybe we cross the street, go to the other side, because even if you know, you know you're not going to do anything or and you're not a threat to her, she might not know that. Like you know, so, so it's just it's just being mindful of, of other people and it, it, looking and going what, what's going. On in the states i think there's a point too where we can say as a, as a canadian like you know i don't know how many people i talk to that when they say they travel and they always wear a canadian flag because they figure they get treated better than somebody who is that we might be considered to be american for example and and, and uh you know so it just i i think there's a point where we we, we should be proud of our uh, heritage and, and stand up and, and say yeah no we do care about other people and, and then keep that in mind you know, so I, I, when you're saying something about, you know, being courte- courteous and, and I, you're right. I don't think it's just across the board, like just for Christians. I think it, it should be across the board. I think uh, maybe it's uh, important as we wrap things up too, is, is just taking a moment or two and uh, understanding why you're making a decision or, or why you're making a statement either for or against a, a mask. You know, what, what are your supporting arguments? Uh, or is it just uh, emotional and, uh, you know, at, at these times, I, I think a lot of people are feeling that a lot of their liberties have been taken away because of the uh, the pandemic. And uh, I mean, the, the virus literally has taken away a lot from people. There's a core question. Go ahead, Scott. I will defer. Well, well I <laughs> well, I think there's a point where there's some people are just being inconvenienced. And, and I think it's just, well, it's a hassle. I don't want to do it. Like, like we're living in such an age of convenience. We can go to our our bank machine anytime we want. We can like, uh, and like I know when when you know as I start getting older, I have to carry reading glasses now around with me every once. And it's just inconvenience. Like you know, so you know, there's one more thing. I'm like, okay, I got my wallet, I got my cell phone, I got my keys, I got my glasses, and now I got my mask. <laughs> like, and I think there's a point where we need a bit of a reality check to go. No, you need all those things. You really do need them. You know, and, and get over the inconvenience. Very, uh, very true. And, uh, you know, uh, on a uh, on a personal level, too, I think it uh, the mask for me, and I've said this on the on the air a number of times, is a reminder that that virus is still out there. The crazy thing, right, is this took one person, one person got this thing and then it just went whoosh. Right. And so that we're just mindful of that. It's great to see the numbers come down, but it just takes one and then a fairly um, not naive, but we were just on alert. Right an unalert planet and wish it went right around the globe. So you're right. Um, Dan, we're, we're dealing with something that's pretty, uh, pretty evil, pretty awful. And we've got to stay vigilant. Well, and as a pastor, I'm, I'm sure you can uh, relate to this. We are all connected. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you listen to the epidemiologists talk, they're like, so you don't understand, like when your Johnny plays with their Susie, whoever Susie's connected with her uncle who was over last weekend is now connected to your Johnny's grandmother. Like it's, you, you, I mean, you got to take everything a little cautious, but the, the listen to the, the medical professionals, like these bubbles actually matter. Be, be careful with each other. And uh, it's, a, it's an interesting time to be alive, isn't it? What an adventure. It is. It is. We can tell the grandkids. <laughs> 
I remember the pandemic. Yeah, well, and the amazing story, uh, we had this about a month ago or so. Uh, it was a, a woman in Britain, I believe, who, uh, or, or it was a, a gentleman uh, who lost his brother in the uh, Spanish flu. So in the 1900s, the early 1900s, and uh, it is, is just died uh, during this pandemic. So saw both of them and, and the way that the world changed. Maybe temporarily, mm. hopefully not temporarily this time around. We, we understand mindfulness. Uh, listen, and if nothing else, it's always great to talk to you guys about it. And, uh, and hopefully we can provide something for someone out there as well uh, in these cool. uh, conversations. We want to thank you again, Andrew. Yep, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Scott. Always a privilege. Thank you. Andrew Allison is a pastor at St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in Leescale. And Scott Campsell is uh, the head proprietor of Okami Kai. Would you, do you want me to say karate? Yeah, please. There we go. Karate. <laughs> Have yourself a great day. Yeah, yeah you guys too. Thanks, Take guys. care. Bye-bye. Thank you,